Welcome to the online video series presented by Structure Studios. This video will explain the construction markup stage. In construction markup, we add details to our project to get it ready to print, such as line styles, text, and symbols. The construction markup stage will prepare the plan for the page layout stage, where we can print our work. Make sure to watch the page layout video for the full construction phase tutorial. When we arrive at construction markup for the first time, a prompt will ask if you'd like to use 3D materials. Clicking on the left option, in black and white, will turn 3D materials off by default. Clicking the right option, the project in color, will turn 3D materials on by default. For now, we'll turn 3D fills off and press OK. We'll add 3D materials later in the video. Before working in the markup stage, it's important to select our default settings. To do this, we'll access the Markup Layer section of the panel menu. There are two types of layers, Markup Layers and Stage Layers. Markup Layers are quick ways to add details to the project, such as electrical, gas, and plumbing lines. Stage Layers correspond to each stage of the software, such as house and hardscapes. We can add, duplicate, and remove markup layers with the buttons at the bottom of the list. The left buttons add a new layer, the middle buttons duplicate the currently selected markup layer, and the right button removes the currently selected markup layer. We can also change the order of the layers with the arrows to the left. The layer order determines which lines and shapes appear on top of the others. Each layer can have a custom line style and fill pattern set as a default. We'll adjust our default settings before we begin to draw. Left-click on the gear icon at the top of the Markup Layers list. The Markup Category Settings box will come up. The settings we select here will apply to all new lines and shapes drawn on the layer and in future projects. First, we'll select the plumbing layer then click on the Line tab in the middle of the screen. In the drop-down box, we'll pick the middle dashed line. We can also choose to have the Markup layer appear as a default category in new projects. By checking this box, new projects will load with the selected layer. To make the line stand out, we can also adjust the color. We'll use the color wheel to change the color to dark blue. First, select blue on the color wheel. Then click inside the triangle to set the specific shade of blue we want. We can also use the color swatches below the wheel to quickly pick a color and find even more options on the swatches tab. We can also add text to the line. With embed text checked, we can label this as plumbing by typing in the text field. We can adjust spacing and the font settings as well. Now, all lines we draw on the plumbing layer will be labeled. Next, we'll set default fill patterns and line styles for the stage layers. Let's select the planner stage layer and click on the Fill tab in the middle of the screen. From the list on the right, select the cross fill pattern. To create an earthy look, click between red and yellow on the color wheel to get a brown hue. We'll select the brown color swatch to quickly set the color we need. Beautiful artistic fill patterns are also available in Vistera and VIP 3D. Let's adjust the default fill patterns of our plants and trees. First, select the plant and trees layer. Under the Fill tab, choose Artistic Styles from the drop-down menu. We'll apply the watercolor style. Our fill patterns updates to reflect this style. Scroll down and select the green leaves options. We can also set default fill styles for individual plants. Make sure to watch the Plants and Trees tutorial for full instructions on assigning unique fill patterns and symbols to your plants. We also have the option to set 3D materials as the default fill pattern. In the Artistic Style drop-down menu, Select 3D Materials. This will apply the materials selected in the Materials stage to the selected layer. 
to set 3D material fills as the default fill style for all stage layers, check the option in the bottom left of the window. When this option is checked, only line styles can be adjusted. Uncheck this option to adjust the individual layer fill patterns. We'll uncheck this option to use our custom fill settings. Press OK to save our default settings. Remember, the settings we select here will only apply to all new shapes and lines drawn on the layer and in future projects. Existing shapes and projects will not be affected by these changes. Our existing planners will not show the new brown fill pattern. If we draw a new planner, it will automatically use the new default settings. Now that we have our default set, we'll add plumbing runs on the plumbing layer. Lines drawn in construction markup will only appear in 2D. Lines, shapes, and library choices will not appear in 3D or affect the 3D view in any way. This makes the markup stage the perfect place to add anything we do not want to be part of the 3D project. First, select the Line tool and left-click in the center of the pool, or water feature if using Vizterra. We'll draw to the left until outside of the shape and left-click, then go down to the pump along the side of the house and left-click. Our first plumbing line is complete, but the shape is still being drawn. To end the shape, Left-click on the last point or press Escape to stop drawing. Next, we'll do the same for our spa. We'll start in the center and draw up to leave the shape. Left, behind our raised areas, and finally down to our equipment pad next to the house. We can also adjust the spacing and font of our embedded text. With the line selected, we can use the Line tab under Object Style to adjust the spacing and font size. This only affects our selected lines, so new lines we draw will use the original default setting. The lines we just drew do not currently show measurements, but we do see our embedded text. Measurements can be easily turned on or off on any shape or line drawn in markup. While a shape is selected, we see the Display Measurements and Display Radius Measurements under the Object Settings tab. We can also get measurements for all our plumbing lines by selecting each line, by holding Control, and left-clicking on each line we want to display the measurements. Once we have the plumbing lines highlighted, we can see the total length of all of them by clicking on Object Properties and reviewing the perimeter or in the Smart Data panel is Linear Feet. We'll keep our measurements off for these lines for now. Next, we'll add additional measurements and color to our project. First, let's display the measurements for the pool. With the Move tool, left-click on the line of the shape. The Paint Bucket icon also appears next to the Pools layer or Water Features layer for Vizterra to show it's the active layer. When a layer is active, Line styles and fill patterns can be selected. Nothing can be drawn or added on a stage layer. New lines or shapes can only be added to a markup layer. Now we'll go to the object styles to review our settings. With a shape selected, we can adjust the line style and fill pattern by going to each tab. Above that, under object settings, we can also display the measurements and radius measurements, display or hide the height label, and turn the fill pattern on and off. We can also add triangulation lines and center lines to our shapes. With our pool selected, we'll go to the Special Ruler section of the panel and see options to add both triangulation and center line. Triangulation will connect all of our radius points to help plot in the yard, while center line creates an even measurement across the center of the shape. For this example, we'll click the center line option. Once we do, we'll see the center line added to the shape. The center line, along with triangulation, are added to a new markup layer once added. We can adjust spacing as well as the excavation value, or how far away from the drawn line of the shape the measurements go. 
We'll also see anchor lines connecting the center line to the closest house shape as well. We can click and adjust where these connect and select any of the lines on center line and triangulation to adjust their line styles and appearance, as we'll do with our pool in a moment. Next, we'll adjust the line style of our pool. Click on the line tab. Let's pick a thick solid line by adjusting the line size value. Next, we want to show the shape is a body of water, so we can apply a blue fill pattern. Fill patterns are located in the library. Left click on the library to open it and click on Fill Patterns to expand the view. Click on the Basic category. We'll select the diagonal cross fill pattern and double click to apply it. To turn the water blue, left click on the Fill tab, then the color block next to the fill type. Select the blue section of the circle, then click inside the triangle to set the specific shade of blue or choose a blue color swatch. We can also adjust the opacity of the fill pattern, rotate the view with the angle slider, and set their scale. Vistera and VIP 3D users can also select an artistic fill, just like we did for our plants and trees. Return to the library and expand the Colored Pencil category under Fill Patterns. We'll select the Water option and double-click to apply it. Once an artistic fill pattern is applied, we can switch between the different styles in the panel menu. With our pond still selected, go to the Fill tab again. Using the drop-down, we can choose a new style, such as Markers or Modern. The fill pattern is still water, but we can quickly change between artistic styles. Any shapes created in design or lines drawn in markup can have the line styles and colors adjusted. Even individual lines drawn in the markup layers can be selected and their line style and color adjusted. We can quickly adjust the fill style and line style of an entire layer by using the quick select circles to the right of the layer. Click on the circle to the right of the hardscapes layer to select all hardscape shapes. We can apply a fill pattern from the library or quickly set all hardscape shapes to 3D materials. On the Fill tab, we can select 3D materials from the drop-down menu. Hardscapes are filled with materials applied in the Materials stage. For now, we'll set them back to empty by choosing the basic blank fill pattern from the library. Next, we'll apply a fill on our plants. Select one plant and choose a fill pattern from the library, such as green leaves. We can quickly apply this to all the same plants in the project with the Matching button. With our plant selected, we'll click Matching under Object Modification. Now all copies of this plant are selected, and we can quickly apply the fill pattern to all by double-clicking on the fill pattern. Next, we'll add text to our project. We can only add guides to a markup layer, not a stage layer such as hardscapes. So when we left click on the text tool under the guides tab, our top markup layer is automatically selected. The text tool allows us to add text to the project. We'll left click to place a text box inside our house. Once the text box is inserted, we can begin typing. We want to label this existing home. So we'll type this into the text box. Our text is too small, so we'll adjust it. We can use the scale tool or adjust it under object styles. Here we see various options for our text. Left click on the font button. Here we can adjust the font type and style as well as the size. We'll change our font size to 24 and press OK. We can see the font size change on the screen. We can add a fill pattern as a background for our text. Simply select a fill from the library or use the panel menu to choose a category. We can also adjust the color of our text. Now let's add one more text box to our project. Select the text tool and left click to insert a text box in the bottom right of our yard. We'll enter the text access through gate. Our text is not quite close enough to the gate, so we can use the call-out text feature. 
While the text box is selected, we'll go to Object Settings. We'll click on Add Callout Arrow. Now we can see a line and arrow coming from our text. With the Move tool, we can move the line and arrow to point at the gate. Now the text is in place and pointing to the gate. The next step to complete our markup will be to add a symbol to our project. Left-click on the library to open it. Go to the Symbols category and click on the Generic Drafting Symbols. We can scroll down to locate the various options. We'll be adding electric lines to our project, so we need a junction box. We'll select the post and double left click on it, or click the Insert One button to place the symbol in the project. We can scale and rotate the symbol until it appears the way we want. These are pre-made symbols in the library, but you can create custom symbols and save them in the library to use in future projects. Next, we want to add electric lines to our landscape lights. First, we'll change the default setting of our electrical layer. Left-click on the gear icon at the top of the Markup Layers list. The Markup Category Settings box will come up. Select the electric layer and change the line style to the dotted line. We'll go to the Swatches tab and select a bright yellow. Press OK to save our default settings. Now we'll connect the junction box to the house. With the line tool selected, left-click on the junction box, begin drawing down and left-click. Go left to the house and left-click. To end the shape, left-click on the last point or press Escape to stop drawing. To connect our landscape lights to the junction box, we'll switch to the Arc tool. Before we start drawing, let's adjust our snaps and constraints. To create arcs, we'll turn off the grid, center point, and midpoint snaps, and set the angle snap to none. With the Arc tool, Left-click on the junction box and create an arc that reaches the first light. Once set, left-click and trace the arc to that light. Left-click to set the arc in place. Continue drawing arcs to each light. Place the arc, left-click to set it, trace the arc, and finally left-click to create it. We'll continue drawing until we've connected all lights to the junction box. Our project is nearly complete, but we still have one more adjustment to make. Some measurements along the pool are hard to see. We can move the measurements using the Change Label tool. The Change Label tool works like a Move tool for measurements. Left-click on the Change Label tool under the Labels and Guides tab. We'll click on our 25-foot measurement and move it until it is no longer covered by the other lines. We can do the same for the other measurements around our shape as needed. The Change Label tool can be used on any measurement in the project. Most changes made in construction markup are visible in other stages as well. Returning to a previous stage, we can see our markup layers and other changes. To hide them, go to the Hide Unhide menu and turn off the Construction Markup option. To add more detail to our page and then print or export the plan, we'll access the Page Layout stage. Make sure to watch the Page Layout video for the full construction phase tutorial. This completes instruction on the Construction Markup stage. For more information, please visit support.structurestudios.com, email support at structurestudios.com, or call 800-778-8996.